Hey, it's Ethan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Swagman Scott Hot 2 hitch bike rack and how it fits on our 2020 Ford F-150. The Scott Hot 2 is going to be a two bike platform style rack capable of holding two bikes up to 60 pounds a piece. And it's going to be primarily with this wheel hook here, as well as one strap down here at the back. So there's no frame contact at all. We're going to dust support 60 pound bikes. So you can get most of the bikes that you can think of on here, whether that's mountain, road or up to e-bikes again as long as they do fit in that 60 pound weight limit because there is no frame contact you can get carbon frame and alternative frame style bikes on here too so there's some pros and cons about this rack that's what we'll be going over in this video let's check it out first thing we'll get into is the fact that we can tilt this away with the bikes loaded up there are some cons about that too first the fact that this handle to pull is all the way in the back so if you have two bikes loaded up it makes it really hard to get to also it doesn't do a lot of resisting gravity when it pulls down on the racks. So if we get two heavy bikes loaded up, which we've tested before, it makes it really difficult to tilt the rack down. For now, we only have one, so it's not too bad. It tilts pretty aggressively, but we'll show you how we would be able to get into the tailgate at this point. So we have a camper on our F-150. And if we want to open the tailgate, move this pedal out of the way. It opens up a good amount of the way, but we'll still make contact with the rack or the bike right around here. But now would be a good time to get anything out of the bed that you might need because we do not have that ability unless we tilt the rack away. But again, the tilt is a little bit unfortunate that it doesn't really help, especially if you get two bikes loaded up here and they're really heavy and that handle is just really far in the back. But with it up, we can get the bike removed. To do that, we'll first start with a strap here on the back tire. I do like the straps, they're long, they're easy to work with. We have this nice pad here that goes across our tire to protect it. Just a nice little feature. From here, I'm gonna hold on to the frame of my bike because once I release this hook, it's gonna start moving. Press this button. On the frame hooks, there are also metal lock cores, or on the wheel hooks rather. So if you want to secure your bike that way, that is an option, which is another nice feature. For now, I'm going to press that button and push that arm out of the way, and we can get our bike removed. With our bike removed, I will place the strap on the back here. And I do just want to point out the fact that we do have the ability to slide this strap up and down the tray to accommodate wheelbases, in this case, up to 50 inches. You can also see we have this groove built in, so that's going to be for your road bikes, but we're also wide enough to support up to 5-inch tire widths so you can get your fat bike tires on here as well. Moving to the front cradle now, you can see it sort of has this basket style shape. So you might be concerned with getting your tires in and out of that, especially if you have larger or heavier e-bikes. But in the case of the Skaha 2, there is a ramp and bridge attachment optional. I'm just gonna go right across there and the ramp is gonna go down. So you can move your e-bikes along that track and then lower them down the ramp if you need a little bit of help loading and unloading some heavier bikes. From here though, I'm gonna get a couple of measurements just to see what it's like to add this onto the back of your vehicle. So the F-150 we have right now is a really long vehicle and you're going to be adding 33 and a half more inches to that. So that might be a little bit unfortunate. You're definitely gonna be sticking out quite a ways. As far as ground clearance goes, from this furthest point here in the back, it's gonna be about 24 and a half inches. So we have a nice rise in the shank and overall the F-150 sits tall enough that I'm not gonna be worried about any sort of ground clearance issues, whether that's going up hills or over curbs. But if you do wanna leave this on here without bikes loaded up, I would recommend using the same handle we used before. This time we're going to fold the rack up towards the back of the vehicle, which is gonna save a ton of space. It's gonna help you out with parking, storing in your garage if you have room for that. New measurement I'm gonna get from the bumper to the furthest point out. It's only gonna be about 15 and a half inches now. So we cut our total distance in about half. Uh, it sits a little bit close, but you still probably have a, a good five or six inches. Maybe this wheel hook here gets a little bit close, but not anything that I'm gonna be worried about. It doesn't move back and forth enough that it's going to make contact with the vehicle. A little tip that we might recommend is using this strap here to hold the wheel hook in place. So just in case it does want to spring forward, maybe after a while that you use this, these joints start to loosen up and this starts to swing a little bit more easily. You can secure it down just like this. 
taking a look at what it covers on the back of the vehicle. So we're still going to have a good view of our license plate. There are going to be a couple different windows that we have to see that. Our backup camera is going to be right there in the middle, so kind of the same situation. You'll be able to see the rack out of the bottom of it for sure, but there's a ton of room over the top of it and on the sides to see. It's not wide enough that it's going to interact with our taillights at all, and it's not tall enough that it's going to reach our rear window. The rack uses an inch and a quarter shank that fits into our two inch hitch receiver. It's held in place by this two inch sleeve and all secured by a three quarter inch anti-rattle bolt with a lock on the end that's going to be key to like to those wheel hook locks we talked about earlier. So if you wanted to use this with a couple different vehicles, inch and a quarter or two inch hitch receivers, that's an option. Overall, if you're looking for a relative value option to get two e-bikes, heavier bikes, or really kind of any bike where you need them to go because we don't make any frame contact, this is a good option for you. It does have that optional bridge and ramp if you need a little bit of help loading and unloading those heavier bikes. I will say though that the tilt and the folding is just a little bit clunky. The tilt especially more so just because that handles in the back and it doesn't really help you a lot when you're going down. So if you do like this rack, but maybe you want to step up and look at something a little bit more premium to protect those bikes while you're going on your trip, you can check out something like the Kulat NV 2.0. It does also have a optional ramp attachment if you need a little bit of help loading and unloading those heavier bikes. Just looks a little nicer, works a little nicer. Also has a built-in bike repair stand if you need to fix your bikes up on the trail. But again, if you are just looking for a simple and straightforward way to get two heavier bikes where you need them to go, the Swagman Sky Hot 2 is a good option for you. This again was just a quick look at how it fits on our 2020 Ford F-150.